I'm Monroe Anderson. As you know, the Republicans in, in the election a couple of weeks ago just whipped the living daylights out of the Democrats. There's no other way you can talk about it. Uh, not only did they beat them and take over both houses in Washington, but they had a clean sweep in Springfield. Let's take a look at a recap. Well, Republicans are celebrating an overwhelming win in Illinois and across the nation. Governor Jim Edgar's landslide re-election victory over Don Clark Netch was enough by itself to gladden the hearts of the GOP. But Republicans, in fact, swept the state's five highest offices. George Ryan for Secretary of State, Jim Ryan for Attorney General, Lolita Didrikson for State Comptroller, and Judy Bartupinka for State Treasurer. Republicans also took control of the Illinois House in Springfield. A very contemplative Dan Rostenkowski walked his dog this morning. He said he thought he had a good run and that he had served his country well. But his dream of returning to the chairmanship of the House Ways and Means Committee may never be realized. And with a Republican sweep in Congress, other committee losses will hit this area particularly hard. The clout catastrophe includes the stripping of Congressman William Lipinski of his subcommittee chairmanship, Representative Curtis Collins of hers, and Congressman Sidney Yates of his powerful position on the Appropriations Subcommittee. And on the Senate side, the Republican takeover knocks out Senator Paul Simon from his three subcommittee chairmanships on judiciary, labor, and foreign relations. Well, there it is. Uh, we're going to discuss this election, what it means for Chicago, what it means for Illinois, what it means for the nation, uh, with these three gentlemen here. Our first guest is William Kelly uh, from the PAC for Middle America and a congressional candidate against um, Congressman Bobby Rush. Uh, of course, Bill didn't make it. Our next guest is um, Bob Starks who is a, a professor at Northeastern University and a political expert of sorts. Thank you. <laughs> and then we have... <laughs> we'll debate <laughs> that in a half right. hour. And then we have with us Paul Green from Governor State University. Okay, why did the Republicans beat up the Democrats so badly? What happened? Well, the country's going right wing. Uh, we, have, we have a right wing uh, populace. Uh, at least 39% 30, that voted is basically right wing. Uh, I, I don't see how um, Republicans can call, can call this a mandate or a sweep when 61% of the people didn't vote, but that's what they're saying. Uh, so at least those thir that 31% that voted uh, were extremely right wing, in my opinion. I think it had more to do with Bill Clinton than anything else. Well, I think Bill Clinton, I think, is going to turn out to be the, the greatest Republican precinct captain in the history <laughs> of our democracy. Uh, you know, the man you know came into office. Uh, talk about uh, you know with no mandate. He came. He was elected with less uh, uh, a popular vote than Michael Dukakis lost by four years earlier. Well, he got a higher. Uh, mandate than the Republicans got this time. Yeah, this their, is true with, because with only 30, what, what, 38 percent of the, the, right. the voters. 39, well, 30. basically 39 percent. But listen, you've now got Bozo and Bono Republicans running the country. Very good, Bob. <laughs> well, like wait that a one, minute, Bozo and Bono. Bozo yeah. and Bono. <laughs> Sonny Bono Republicans in the House, and you've got a bunch of Bozos in the, in the Senate, headed up by Jesse Helms. How well, about that? now that now that the both parties have spoken. Um, there are three things like that happened. That yeah, that's very good about that. The Democrats were without a focus. Two, the country is frustrated by the uh, inability to solve problems, even though uh, I disagree with Bill, that Bill Clinton had an excellent uh, uh, last two months, foreign policy successes, the economy is perking along. Uh, but it's Bill Clinton uh, and his inability to give a focus to his party uh, that hurt. And number three... And well, I is there so much a focus with Bill Clinton or he doesn't seem to have any vision? You know, when, as a candidate, he had a, a vision. Yeah. It's the economy, stupid. Right. As President Clinton, he's um, on the gaze for a moment, then he's um, health care, then he's here, then he's there. And if he gets pressured too much, he backs up and gives that's, in. That's exactly it, it, isn't that point. a problem? He originally was coming from the Democratic Leadership Council, which was the center of the Democratic Party. And that the was right one of wing his... of the Democratic Party. Correction. Bob says the right wing, I say exactly. the center. Exactly. Uh, but the well, fact... Well, Bob's a left-wing Democrat. Absolutely. Bob's beyond left-wing. Uh, 
if it was a Chicago stadium, he'd be in the stands. But the, uh, the, 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 the third factor, which is the most important factor, I think, is that we now live in a suburbanized society. We have a suburban majority running America. We have a suburban majority running Illinois. And you cannot say people who don't vote somehow voice their, their anger or their frustration. In a democracy, if you don't vote, you don't count. And, uh, and, and frequently, you don't care. And you don't care, so uh, you can't run a democracy on begging people to come to the polls. If people want to say, it's none of my business, then it's that they have to pay the consequences. Right, right. Okay, but now, if we, if we look, let's go locally. Sure. And we'll go back to national a little later. But if, if you look at, at us here locally, Cook County is still staunchly Democrat. Mm -hmm. the, the, the whole uh, Republican sweep left this, the, the county basically untouched itself for Rostenkowski. That's but true, then but you look at the state and but we're back remember, where... But remember, this, uh, that, that's my point about the suburbanized society. First, there are two real important... Well, there are suburbs in Cook County, yes. I yeah, think that says more about the Republican Party in Cook County yeah. than it says Correct. about Cook County itself. In fact, there are more Republican voters in Cook County than there are in DuPage County. Right. So right. if we could just get a Republican right. Party in Cook County that reflects middle class values... Let me also add one other thing. The Democratic victory each year becomes smaller and smaller, the Republicans have a, a larger and larger percentage of the vote uh, in, in, in each election. Okay, but wait, just let me, let me throw something out here and, and any of you or all of you can address it. Mm -hmm. Is it also, it seems to me that Chicago has some of the most Republican Democrats that you can find. Absolutely. I mean, they, they basically well, embrace including Absolutely. Mayor Daley, mm -hmm. they embrace the same sorts of, mm -hmm. of ideas and platforms that the, uh, the, that the Republicans do, so... That's because well, let, let there's no re uh, apparatus in Chicago for Republican candidates to get elected. So you have people like, uh, you know, Sheriff Sheehan or Tom Hines that are, you know, anywhere else would be considered Republicans, right. uh, or Mayor Daley, you know, talking about privatization and what have you, but right. they're running as Republicans. Yeah, the Richard Daley is, is about as right-wing as Newt Gingrich. One thing about Jesse us. <laughs> <Wait a minute. laughs> okay. Okay, you want to dispute that? You want to dispute that? No, no, yeah, he's, for, he's for uh, privatization. Am Does I that right? make him a right winger? Yes, it does. That's a right wing position. No, that's a privatization. That may be a right, right wing okay. position. Go ahead. Go ahead. That is a right wing position. Point two. Um, he's for uh, throwing African Americans off jobs and hiring white people. Mm -hmm. That's that's a right wing position. Well, no, wait a minute. Now, wait, a wait, 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 wait. Before let's stop this for one second. <laughs> why, why should we stop? Is, he's now, you're not going to tell me no, he's that not, wait, Richard wait, wait. Daly is not right wing. What? No, I'm not. Wait, this is what I'm saying. On, and on Richard that Daly is no, not I'm a Republican. Wait, I want to address this point. Is that Richard Daly is not getting a lot of black votes, and the general practice is you give the jobs to the people that supported you, right? No, not Bob. If Bob ever got into power, he would be a multicultural saint. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, the, is, the, is that uh, a political party is supposed to be big enough for people of different philosophical views who can have some shared commitment and also can differ. Uh, the trouble with Bob is that Bob's philosophical tent is around three inches wide. Uh, the problem with the That's Democrat, big enough for black people. That, well, I know, but, but exactly. the point being... And, and right-thinking white people. And the critical thing, that's the only time you ever used the word right in your life, <laughs> the, the, the critical thing is, is that you see now that unless you have a multi-philosophy Democratic Party, you could forget about ever controlling Congress again, which means that when Bob reads out of the party all these moderate to conservative Democrats, that just guarantees his good friends Gingrich and Helms will be running the country. Now you look at the trade-offs, Bob, from your perspective of what happens when you change from Democrat to Republican, and you mm -hmm. look at the chairman of those committees, and you tell me that what you believe in is going to be furthered more now than it was well, look, before? When, 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 when Democrats began to embrace privatization, when Democrats began to embrace all of the right-wing uh, ideology, and this is what's going to happen. Uh, it, the the Democrats are going to find themselves being pushed, and in effect, jumping over to the Republican side. Uh, Lipinski is, for all practical purposes, and I think you would agree with you, Mr. Kelly, is a Republican. In fact, there are people who say to me, I didn't see it, that on Lipinski, a palm card, he had vote for Lipinski for Congress and vote for Jim Edgar for governor. And here's a man who is who is a practicing Republican, <laughs> sort of like Lou Palmer, right? right. Uh, here's a, so, so my point is that 
people like Bill Clinton, who have no real strong philosophical grounding, are now going to blow with, with the way the wind is blowing. And that is a very tragic situation in American politics, that you simply move the way that the wind is blowing rather than but, standing you know, firm but I, okay. on principles and ideas Let me ask that you, you this, though, really, because truly believe in. I can remember when I was in college, mm -hmm. back in the 60s, right. to be a liberal was a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. Now you have liberals apologizing for being liberals. That's why, why, should why, should the why should they? Why should they? Years since the 1960s, what have we gotten from from the liberals that have been elected to Congress? You've, You've gotten, gotten 40 million abortions, no, no, teen no, no, pregnancy, no, 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 no. teen suicide. Come on, uh, come the, on. Uh, the, the drug culture. The drug culture. Of course. Gave you, that? What, you think Ronald Reagan gave us the drug culture? What, yes. You yes, think so? Yes. Well, there's the problem. Well, uh, yeah, you know, the welfare through the CIA. Thing. I think. This is all. <laughs> yep. Yes. This is all <laughs> due to the 1960s liberal philosophy. And what you're going to see is Newt Gingrich and Jesse Helms overturning that 1960s liberal philosophy that has run our country into to the gutter. And that's his run the country in the gutter. That's so, right. so Ronald Reagan's uh, 1980s, the Reagan-Bush policies that ran through the 1980s uh -huh. did not wreck the country. Absolutely they actually not. It just showed that 12 years of Reagan wasn't enough to overturn 30 years of godless... You know, listen, listen to Bill uh, and Bob, you really hope liberals. that on a multiple choice exam there's a third answer, doesn't <laughs> no, right, it? Right, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're really wait, hoping for that third answer. answer. You, you are, you are, you are the third answer. answer. Absolutely. But, but, but. But, you know, this may be a microcosm of what we're going to see in Congress for the next two years, just right here. Mm -hmm. We're going to commercial break, and when we come back, what I want to talk to our guest about is an article that ran shortly after the election in USA Today, where basically the headline said that the reason the election went the way it was was that angry white men struck out. And so let's see, were white men angry and did they take their anger out on Clinton and the Democrats? We'll be back. I will work with the same vigor, the same energy. I will try to exercise influence. I am also a member of the majority party and I plan to use that for the citizens of the district. I will tell you that where we differ is Mr. Rostenkowski believes the way to help the people is with big government. I believe the way to help the people is leave the money in your wallet and get you the money in the first place by leaving it with you. You've seen them from afar. Now see them up close. It's fun for the whole family. Join Channel 2's Bill Curtis swimming with the whales and dolphins tonight at 10. To WeatherNet, an exclusive look at the weather outside by a computer from Chicago area schools. Brought to you by Channel 2 and Best Buy. No matter where you park your car, never park it without the club anti-theft device. The Club. Police recommended to keep your car safe from thieves. Available at better stores everywhere. If you have too many bills and don't know where to turn, get free information now. Call the free 24-hour bankruptcy hotline. Dial 645-HELP. That's 645-HELP. Now is a terrific time to buy new carpet. Why? Because Empire is having a terrific holiday sale. And it's a big sale. 10 to 50% off on the best crush-resistant carpets in our warehouse. This is your chance to get a real bargain. We'll bring samples right to your home with low sale prices that include padding, next-day installation, and no payments till April. Hurry, at these sale prices, they're going fast. 588 and Clinton today was reaching out, saying he is eager to work with Republicans who share his goal of making the government work for ordinary Americans. I pledge today to work with all the members of the Congress, and especially the new Republican leadership, to achieve that goal. Welcome back to Common Ground, where we're talking about the Republican landslide and, and, and uh, historical victory and what it will mean for President Clinton. Now, when we went to break, yes. we were talking about one newspaper characterized this as angry white men striking out at Clinton and the Democrats. Um, 
But in the south, in the south, it's absolutely true. The New York Times exit polling data shows that uh, white male support of the Democratic Party in the South was around 15 to 20 percent, which is incredible when you consider, you know, that 25, 30 years ago, the solid South meant solid Democratic. There is no doubt in uh, in my mind that the Democrats lost control of the Congress uh, in both chambers because the South has deserted the Democratic Party. For all the years that the Democrats maintained control of Congress, 40 years in the House and most of the time in the Senate, it was because of the South. The South was a part of the country where that would vote for Republicans like Reagan for president, but would vote for Senate and for House for Democrats. Sure. Now you see the change where not only do you have it at the congressional level, but you now have state legislatures like in North Carolina and Florida, now Republican. What this means, I believe, is that this, this might be a critical turning point in the South where not only would vote Republican for presidential elections, but now it's going to be very difficult for the Democrats not only to win congressional races, but to get the kind of farm system through their legislatures to have people who could run for those higher offices. So the Democratic Party in the South is at a real crossroads, whether it can even exist. Okay, okay, well, how much of this has to do with race? You know, I think the media threw out the term white male to try and put a negative spin on the Republican victories. What it really was was the middle class uh, lashing out at Bill Clinton for what he's done uh, to our country, uh, you know, reneging on the middle class Okay, tax but no, I, was, I was looking at numbers mm -hmm. and 70% of the white men who make $100,000 a year or more voted Republican. Right. That doesn't sound middle class to no, me. But, but I mean, you can take any statistic that you want, but I think if you really look at the big picture, it's the middle class saying enough is enough of 30 years of uh, the Democrats running down our history, our culture, our traditions, our values, destroying our, our families. Mm -hmm. It's about time mm -hmm. that we get in there and elect some people like Newt Gingrich who mm -hmm. stand up for our values sure. who are going to represent us in the U.S. Congress right. for a change. Right. The, the, the Bozo uh, and Bono Republicans say in effect that they want their country back. Now that's a code word for taking the country back from black people no. that have, have influenced and women and women and, who, and, and, activists, and women. activists who have influenced and no, taken the country, taking the country to, back, back from the drug culture, from the welfare well, state. Well that's that's from of course teen being blamed teen on African American people. Forty million abortions. We want to take all our of this back all of this is, liberal policies. Right. All of these policies have result have, are, are the result of, of African Americans having the voting rights bill and <laughs> districts uh, where they can elect uh, people of their choice in the South, etc. So these are all being blamed on, on African Americans. But let's go back to one other point. The reality is the Democratic Party machinery nationally broke down. Now, for whatever reason, and, and again, I would rely on my learned uh, friend here and colleague to tell me why, but throughout the nation, the Democratic machinery failed to get its people to the polls. Yeah. He but, was okay, correct. One other 57% of the men, white men nationally, voted Republican. But again, we're only talking about 57% of a 39% turnout. But those are the people 61%, who count, Bob. But no, listen, there's something deeper here. What happened to the Democratic Party machinery in the South and, and, in, and in, the, in the suburban communities that did not get that 61% out? And I'm sure that some of that 61% were actual Democrats who did not come to the polls. I think the I think that's a larger and more well, serious but I, question. But I think you know when you you can answer that question in part by the fact that the Democratic Party is still locked into its urban base, and that urban base in almost all parts of America is dwindling. It's, to take the state of Illinois, the city of Chicago in 1948 cast almost 50 percent of the vote in Illinois. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the last election, uh, we haven't got all the computer runs done, but I would wager it's going to be around 20 percent. Yes. So the city right. of Chicago is no longer this monster that we live in. It's no longer the monster that can run the state of Illinois. The block of votes that is where the growth is economically and politically and demographically are the suburbs, the Collar County suburbs, and the expanding suburbs beyond that. Like DuPage County. And that's where the Democratic Party has has very, very, very little influence, and there is no structure there. There is not an elected Democrat in any part of DuPage County for any okay. office. Okay. So when you say the Democratic machinery didn't come out, there is no Democratic machinery. Plus, I think Bob has a point, the Democratic Party has not gotten over the issue of race. 
And I have well, argued the Republicans this, either. Well, but they don't even White consider it. They don't consider it. it. But, you, but, you, but you don't, when you say it like that, it's tough to build coalitions. Because the only way, in my opinion, the only way to build coalitions is, through, is to put the truth on the table it's through and the, deal from that point. No, the only way to do it politically is through the party structure. One of the reasons John Stroger won as county board president in Cook County is because there were remnants left of a party organization, and he received the support of the, those Democrats in Chicago and Cook County who still are loyal Democrats. He won because he was a Democrat, and that's cru crucial. I've argued this point with you so for you 10 years. So you don't think the, the, the Republican, uh, th those men in the South, those white men in the South who went to the Republican Party, that race wasn't on their mind? Race, of course, is on their mind, but it was on their mind for 10 years ago, it was on their mind 20 years ago, but they still voted Democratic for, for Senate and for and for House. The reason you had a Foley as Speaker of the House and a George Mitchell as President of the Senate was because of white conservative Southerners who voted for Southern Democrats for the House and the Senate. They gave the Democrats a chance to organize both chambers. Bill Kelly should be thrilled right now that it, that it seems that now we're only going to have Republicans coming from the South. What part of the country is going to elect Democrats? Good okay. question. We're going to go to commercial break and maybe somebody can answer that when we come back. We'll be back. Yes, it matters. Yes, it counts. One vote can sound a chord. And one plus one keeps adding up till you can't be ignored. Someone knows what it feels like to hide from the world. Someone knows what it feels like to be afraid. I just want to die. No. Someone knows what loneliness feels like. What hopelessness feels like. What secrets feel like. Maybe that someone is you. If you suffer from depression, call Charter at 1-800-CHARTER. If you don't get help at Charter, please get help somewhere. The spectacular Thanksgiving sale is happening now at Adriana Furs. Chicago's world-class furrier is offering 50% off the entire inventory. Thousands to choose from. This elegant $6,000 American female mink coat, now just $2,700 for only $89 a month. The spectacular Thanksgiving sale. Immediate financing is always available. Adriana Furs, 612 North Michigan Avenue. Feel the warmth and luxury that you Time is running out on the biggest finance offer Harlem Furniture has ever extended to the public. Buy furniture now and pay 0% interest till 1996 during Harlem Furniture's After Thanksgiving sale. Save 23 to 52% on Chicagoland's best furniture values and pay no interest this year or even next year. It's Harlem's biggest finance offer ever. 0% interest till 1996. Harlem Furniture's After Thanksgiving sale. Hurry, sale ends Monday. Harlem Furniture, you'll like our style. back to Common Ground where we're talking about the election and what it means for Democrats. You were asking, when we went to break, you, you, were, you, you were asking what all this means for Democrats. Does it mean, in, in essence, that the Democratic Party could be dead? If the Democratic Party doesn't go where the votes are, yeah, the Democratic Party could go the way the Whigs. There's no reason that the Democratic Party has to continue to exist. Okay, well, when you say go where the votes are, do you mean further to the right? No. Not necessarily philosophically, geographically. You have to, people vote their interest. You have to be able to deal with the growing suburban majority of voters in this country. So you have to deal with suburban interests. Whether Bob Starks likes it or not, you have to fish where the fish are, and that's where the fish are. So the Democratic Party has to link itself to where the population is. It just can't keep winning smaller and smaller number of races in the declining urban centers of America. It's as simple as that. I think that what happened is the middle class in this country have realized that if they're going to have their uh, you know their jobs and good good jobs, good education for their children, good uh, you know safer streets. That they're going to have to go with the Republican Party. Kelly, give me a definition of middle class. You keep saying the middle class. You mean white people? Well, right? no, I mean the people well, who play who by the rules. About. People who work oh, hard. White people, people who pay who by the rules, right? Well, you see, it, as long white as you keep people doing that, hard. wow. You know what you're doing? You well, well, are just proving. Me. You're proving well, my me. point. Well, you're showing how you're, you're showing how the Democrat Party. You're proving that the Democrat Party has gone so far to the extreme left that middle class people. 
like myself well, have no are, choice but to vote Republican. the middle class. You know, here, I'm an Irish Catholic from the 19th Ward of Chicago. Right. You would think that I would be the biggest, de I would be a Democrat precinct captain, right? Well, I ran as a Republican, and I beat my Democrat opponent by a 4-to-1, 5-to-1 vote, uh, vote and margin. Most of the